So what do sports cars, golf clubs, and budget home gym gear have in common? That's what we're going to find out today on this episode of the Gym Crafter Podcast. And welcome to the 10th episode of the Gym Crafter Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for tuning in. And if you're listening on Spotify, yes, we are now on Spotify. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing over there. I mentioned last week that we're on Apple Podcasts. We are not yet on Apple Podcasts. I'm waiting for them to approve stuff. What they're approving, I don't know, but uh, Apple, right? So, but hopefully we'll be up there soon and I'll make sure to let you guys know when that happens. Now, if you like this episode, make sure you hit the like button down below. Make sure you're subscribed so you catch all of the upcoming episodes as well as the other reviews and content that I'm putting out. And if you think this episode will help somebody that you know, make sure and share it with them so that they get the benefit of listening as well. And if you hear about anything in this episode that you like, I'm gonna have links to everything down below so that if you hear something you want more information on or you wanna go check out, that link will be down below in the description. But for now, let's get on to the episode. Now, today's episode was supposed to be my second episode in my How to Buy a Rack series for your home gym. And while that second episode will come up next week, I've had so many questions over the last week that basically boiled down to the same thing that I felt it was really important to make this episode that I'm doing right now because I think it'll help a lot of people out there when they're building their home gym or they're building their garage gym. And basically, I've got a ton of these questions in all different forms, but they all boil down to one thing. How do I buy something on a budget and not end up regretting what I bought, right? We've all done that, right? We've all thought we were getting a good deal and we don't get a good deal. I'm always reminded when I talk about the subject of an old Dennis Miller stand-up bit. For you young folks, you don't, may not even know who that is, but back in the day, uh, in the early 90s, Dennis Miller was a really popular stand-up comedian and one of my favorite bits of his, he talked about going into Kmart and seeing a rack with lime green leisure suits on sale for two for one. And the punchline of the joke was two of is still and if they really want to screw you they'll give you three and that's kind of how i feel about a lot of this budget gear that's hitting the market these days so because i just reviewed a couple of those budget pieces and a lot of you sent in questions like i said i thought it was really important to address this topic of making sure that you don't end up with two lime green leisure suits and possibly three now the two reviews that i just posted were of some of the equipment i've been talking about in the podcast lately in my gym right now i've got a leg press and hack squat from rit fit and from major fitness and i've also got a combination rack with like cables and smith machine and power rack from both of those companies as well and this last week i dropped my initial overview of both the rit fit m1 combination rack as well as the major fitness b52 and i think a lot of people were surprised if you've been paying attention at all these companies, especially major, have been just an excessive marketing push. I don't think I've seen people market fitness gear this much since late night infomercials were pushing shake weights and thigh masters. It's been crazy. I can't scroll through, and I can't even turn on my phone without seeing one of these companies, again, mostly major, popping up in front of me talking about buying something from them. So it's not a surprise that I've got a ton of questions about the reviews I posted because the reviews I posted while I talked about a lot of things that I liked, I was also very open and honest about the trade-off between spending less money and what you don't get when you don't spend a little bit more money. And I think that because almost nobody else out there has been pointing those things out, Again, it took people by surprise and I got a ton of email and a ton of questions and people saying, hey, I was planning on buying X, but now maybe I should buy Y. So I wanna talk just generally, we're gonna use these pieces as examples today, but I really wanna talk generally about when you're building a home gym and you're trying to save money and you're trying to get good equipment that you're gonna love and is gonna last a long time, but not spend your entire 401k on it, how do you do that? What do you look for? What are some, some things you can look at? What are some things you should avoid? So that's what we're gonna talk about on today's episode. And I think the best way to illustrate this point is by a couple of analogies. When I was younger, and these are still popular today, but when I was younger, there was something called a kit car, which was really, really popular. Not kit from Knight Rider. I'm gonna really work to make myself seem as old as possible this episode, so just get ready for this. But kit cars were, so back in the day when they sold Volkswagen Bugs, the original version, one of the cool things about the bug is you could take the body off and it was a super reliable car that you could work on yourself. And these companies sold what are called kits. And what they did was they simulated well-known sports cars. In my time, it was the Ferrari Testarossa from uh, Miami Vice. And it was that, it was some other Ferraris, it was some Porsches. And you could buy these inexpensive fiberglass kits. You could take the body off of your VW bug and you could put these kits on it. And from a distance driving down the street, 
kids like myself would be like, oh, cool, a Ferrari, oh, cool. And I remember my dad would always be like, ah, that's a kit car, ah, that's a kit car. And one day I asked him, I said, what do you keep, like, what do you mean it's a kit car? So we actually went up to one in a parking lot and he showed me and we look inside and it's like, oh, that's not a Ferrari. And he's showing me all the, the lines that don't line up on the body of the car and the fact that the rims are still just, they're VW rims with like Ferrari hubcaps on it. It's just, it looks great from a distance, but once you get up close and you start using it and looking at it, it's like, hey, that's not really what I thought it was. Another example from my youth was the very first set of golf clubs that I bought it was a used set of Spalding golf clubs. And Spalding was the brand that Kmart sold as their house brand. And you might as well have just tied some bricks onto the end of sticks because no matter how well you hit the ball with these things, it hurt my hands. On the, I, I really disliked playing golf with those clubs because it was painful to use them no matter how good you were, no matter how cleanly you hit the ball, it was just, it was awful. And for those of you who like cars and those of you who like golf clubs, you can relate to those examples. Just because it looks like a golf club doesn't mean it's going to work like a golf club. So, do you see where I'm going with this? A lot of times when you see this lower priced budget gear marketed, and again, the marketing on some of these brands is just out of hand, right? I mean, they, they are spending a ton of money putting this so that you see it every day. And every day you look at it and you go, I kind of like that. I kind of like that more. Well, maybe I should buy it. Well, this guy has it and this other guy has it. Well, look at all these people. They're so happy with it. Maybe I should. And that's the plan, right? That's the whole point of sending these things to every person with a social media account that has any kind of following at all is to stick these things in front of your face as many times as they can so that eventually you go, well, it looks like a Ferrari. It must be a Ferrari. I know it only costs a fraction of what a Ferrari costs, but it looks like a Ferrari, so it must be a Ferrari. And those two examples are two of the examples that I can use that are on the bad spectrum of this stuff, right? Like they look cool. They look like they do 187 exercises, right? So it must be good. And when you get them in your home and you start actually using them, all of a sudden you realize that they do 187 exercises poorly and you spent money maybe you shouldn't have. And if you've never had one before, you might like it. And if you don't lift a lot of weight and go back and look at my reviews on both of those products that I just talked about, because I actually talk about who is a good customer for those. And one is definitely different than the other one, right? If you've watched those reviews, one I actually like, one I actually don't like. But when you're looking at these things, that's one option. Another option is, again, didn't have a lot of money growing up. So I wanna use two other things. And that was a, two more Kmart examples. So when I was a kid, I basically wore hand-me-down clothes from my uncle. And in the 80s, I wore green corduroy bell-bottoms to junior high because we couldn't afford clothes, right? And that's, that was from Uncle Ken. <laughs> that's what I had to wear. Not great, but every once in a while I would get something new and it would be new from Kmart. And I remember buying a pair of hiking boots that were just the Kmart house brand. And I remember getting a pair, a brand new pair of Wrangler jeans, which by the way, if you ever wanna get teased for the jeans that you buy, go back in time to the 1980s and wear Wrangler jeans. They're a lot cooler nowadays with Brett Favre as their spokesperson. But back in the day, these were not the popular kids' jeans. But what they were is they were really good hiking boots and they were really good jeans. These things lasted me, both of them lasted me until I grew out of them. So just because something is a low price, and it looks like one thing, sometimes it is that thing. So I don't wanna knock everything at a low price, and I wanna spend the rest of this episode talking about how do you differentiate the kit cars and the Spalding golf clubs from the kind of quality hiking boots and blue jeans. And if you're able to do that, you're gonna be able to build a home gym on a budget and avoid the things that are like lime green leisure suits and get the things that are much more valuable and that you're actually gonna be able to use and keep and benefit from for a long time. The way that you wanna look at this is that there's always gonna be a trade-off for a lower price. And what you need to do is you need to be smart about what you're trading for that lower price. And basically, if we group home fitness gear into two groups, you've got two options. Option one, you're giving up stability, safety, and performance in exchange for a low price and a very high marketing budget, right? Like you can market around a lack of safety, stability, and performance if you're getting something that looks cool and is marketed well and is a low price, right? That's a pretty enticing offer when you're only looking on the internet. Option two is you give up pretty looks, you give up non-essential functions, and you give up good packaging. In exchange, 
you get a good price. Back in the day, when I first started building a home gym, this was Titan Fitness, right? Like Titan Fitness shipped stuff terribly. You'd get stuff with rack ends sticking out of the boxes and shipping damage, and there'd be dents in it, and the, the welds were some of the ugliest welds I've ever seen in the world. But it was a low price, and it worked well, right? They didn't really sacrifice in a lot of their stuff on function or safety, they just sacrificed on stuff that didn't really have a lot to do. And this isn't true of all their products, but a lot of their products were, yeah, they were beat up and they were ugly, but they worked well and they were the right price. So that's a great example of, of option number two. So let's give you some real world examples of option one and option two so that you kind of can get a better sense of what I'm talking about. I'm gonna use some real products that you can actually go look at right now. The first one I wanna talk about is barbells. So you can go onto Amazon and you can buy a $200 or $250 barbell and the specs will be great. And this is something that a lot of times people, they overlook is they look at the specs but they don't understand that specs don't necessarily mean all that they should mean. So for example, I hear a lot of people saying when you buy a barbell, it needs to be uh, weighted at 1,500 pounds or more weight capacity, and it's got to have 210,000 tensile strength, and they list off all of these specs. And so companies on Amazon will go, it's okay, it's a 1,500-pound barbell, and it, just because it has those specs doesn't mean it's going to perform like the person telling you they need those specs thinks those specs mean it should perform. Is that Kamala Harris enough for you? <laughs> Sorry, let me try and make that more clear. Just because something on paper looks good doesn't mean it's gonna perform like you think it's going to based on what it looks like on paper. And barbells are a great example. And in fact, a lot of companies will build these barbells that are, well, this mine's 240K tensile strength and mine's 250. And what a metallurgist will tell you is that at some point, you get to be too hard and it breaks. I'll give you another good example. I like American barbell barbells and You'll see people say, oh, well, this Amazon barbell for $300 has needle bearings in it, and that's awesome, and that's what you need for this bar. And then American Barbell will say, well, my barbell is $600, and it looks on paper like they've got the same specs. The weight capacity is the same, the tensile strength's the same, they both have needle bearings in them. And what you don't realize is that inside the sleeve, and there's a really cool video on the American Barbell Instagram page right now that'll show you this, where the American Barbell bearings ride on an inner race. So there's a ring of metal around this, the barbell itself that the bearings ride on. And the reason they do that is the hardness of those bearings are two to three to four times harder than the barbell itself. So when you put weight on that sleeve and then you spin those, what happens is the harder metal of the bearing scores the barbell and eventually the barbell shears off. There's been tons of examples of this of people buying cheap barbells and they break and that's why they break. So American Barbell puts this little race, this little piece of metal between the barbell itself and the bearings and it's much more expensive to do, but it's going to keep your barbell from breaking. So that's a great example of specs on a piece of paper can mean two different things in real life. And when you look at something and go, oh, well, it's this barbell that everybody else is selling for $500, but on Amazon it's 250. Well, the specs are the same. It should be the same, right? It's definitely not. I'll give you another good example at more of a budget price point. You could go online to Amazon and you can buy an inexpensive barbell for a couple hundred dollars, or you can go on to a company I really am growing to like a lot, Living Fit. I have one of their barbells here. It's, a, it's in the mid $200 price point, and it is hands down one of the best barbells you can get at that price. Now, when you look at its specs, compared to the one on Amazon and their similar price. Why is one better? Because one has much better components, much better engineering, much better construction. It's just you don't see that in spec. So there's a really good example. If you're looking for a budget barbell, I'll put a link below. Look at that Living Fit uh, barbell. Like I said, you can get it in, in hard chrome for right at 200 bucks, I think. Same thing with that same company's bumper plates, right? And when we're talking about trading certain things for a lower price and those things being either detrimental to the performance of the product or just non-essential to the performance of the product, I'm going to give you the bumper plate example. So right now on Fringe Sports, Instagram page or maybe YouTube page, they've got a video of them buying Amazon Essential bumper plates that are 10 pounds and they can literally fold them in half and break them with their hands, right? They're just, they're not good. So the way that the Amazon plates get a lower price is the actual quality of the plate. Like you can't drop those plates. You can't, like they're gonna be tacoed and, and warped in no time and you're sacrificing performance for the price. 
With the Living Fit plates, where do they get a lower price? Because I actually, for, if you're looking for budget bumper plates, the Living Fit bumper plates are the best choice. They're way less expensive than just about anybody else. They're grippy, they're durable. But where they fall down is the lettering, the white stuff that covers the lettering all peels off. Like, it, like the more I use these things, the more the lettering rubs off and they look kind of sketchy right now, right? Like it's missing letters, it's missing the little logo on some of them, the, the weight marking is missing. Now, I'm just gonna go in and repaint them myself, but I would rather trade the white lettering coming off for the lower price than performance for the lower price. So there's another really good example if you're looking to buy something on a budget. Those two items cost relatively the same thing, but instead of buying something cheaply on Amazon that's marketed hard, buy something from a good company with a good reputation who's gonna take care of you and is gonna cut corners in the right way. And that brings us to the two racks that I reviewed. And the point that I made in, in the RitFit review and just to cut to the chase early between the two racks even though the rip fits on sale for 899 right now they've got a, a version two coming out so this one's on clearance the major fitness is four or five hundred dollars more than that i would make more money telling you to buy the major fitness one there's lots of people out there riding the massive advertising wave of major telling you you should buy these in all honesty the rip fits a much better product it's going to cost you a lot less and it's better. And it's because of what they traded for their lower price versus what Major traded for their lower price. If you go back and watch the B52, the Major Fitness Rack Review, what you'll see is that they made the poles for the Smith machine out of hollow metal. So anything over about 70 pounds, the bar starts to really wobble back and forth as that weight causes these tubes to bend and flex. On the Rip Fit, those bars are solid, and those solid bars do a couple of things. Number one, the Smith machine is rock solid, right? So if you're buying this for a Smith machine, the Smith machine on the Rip Fit is much better. Now, the knurling isn't as nice. You're trading pretty knurling for a much more stable thing. So there's a great example of the trade-off. We're trading something non-essential for something that's performance related. The other thing that these bars do is they make this two by two rack so the, the major is two by three, so it looks more stable. But in reality, if you watch me shake the major rack on that review and you watch me shake the rip fit rack, you'll notice that the two by two rip fit rack is actually more stable. And part of that is because of those bars for the Smith machine. So go back and watch those reviews if you're in the market for something like this. But point after point after point, you know, rip fit the shipping isn't all that great, right? It's just everything's wrapped in bubble wrap, thrown in a box. There's scratches, there's dings, there's nicks in the powder coat. The powder coat scratches really easily. It's not the prettiest rack. The Major Fitness is a much prettier rack. And on an Instagram commercial, it comes across looking much better. Performance wise, the things that you get over here is you're getting better performance. The cable system, for example, you can actually use the cables at all angles at the top of this machine, whereas the Major, you can't. So I could go on and on, go back and watch those videos, but you get the point. You want to make sure that you're trading the right things for a low price and not things that matter like safety. I've got a product in this gym right now that I just wrote an email to the manufacturer and I can't share it because of liability reasons, but it's not a safe product. And I want to find out what the manufacturer has to say about this particular issue that I found on it. And I'm going to make a video about it either way, but I want to give them a chance to step up and say something. But it's another one that the marketing is through the roof. You see it everywhere, but I won't even work on, out on it now. I won't use it anymore because of the safety issue. So you don't want to trade safety for a lower price in glitzy marketing. So I think that I've talked about what you trade for a lower price enough. And I want to get into some actual concrete pieces of advice for people who are building a home gym on a budget. And I've got three general pieces of advice and then I've got six tips to follow that up. And an analogy I want to use for you is when I was in my, my early 20s, me and some buddies wanted to go to Florida on vacation. We wanted to go to Universal Studios. We wanted to ride the rides. We wanted to drink a lot. And uh, we didn't want to spend a lot of money because we literally didn't have any money. None of us had credit cards. None of us had a lot of cash. So we all piled into my Honda Civic and we drove the 18 hours down there. And first of all, getting down there and not being able to stop and stay overnight halfway down, 18 hours in a Civic for three guys, one of which is really tall. <laughs> Actually, all three of us were really tall. Uh, not the best experience. Air conditioner stopped working halfway down. It just, it was awful. We get down there. The only hotel we can afford is a hotel, is a Motel 6. I'm not even sure those are around anymore. It was awful. We stayed in the bed. The bed smelled bad. We ended up sleeping on the floor 
the rest of the nights because the beds just smelled so awful. There was traffic coming and going from multiple rooms all night long, so we ended up taking all of our luggage, putting it into the car every day because we were worried about the room getting broken into. We couldn't afford the speed pass, so literally we waited a couple of hours for each ride. So the couple of days that we were able to be at the park and that we spent all of our money on, we only got to ride maybe four or five rides. We couldn't afford the, the food at the park, so we were always thirsty, we were always hungry. We had to leave the park and go to 7-Eleven for hot dogs for food. You guys get the idea. So on paper, we got what we wanted, right? Like we really wanted to go on a vacation to Florida, go ride rides at Universal Studios, and we somehow found money for beer, so. But uh, it, on paper, it was a good vacation. In real life, it was a terrible time. Even the fact of being there with three friends, you know, normally when something like that happens, you can look back and laugh. None of us look back and laugh on this vacation. It was really, it was a waste of money, it was a waste of time. And the point I'm trying to make is, is that sometimes the thing that you wanna buy on a budget you just shouldn't buy on a budget, right? And it's a piece of advice not a lot of people wanna hear and it's a piece of advice a lot of people don't follow because they want what they want and they've seen that barrage of Instagram ads so it's, they've got it in their head that, well, Tim's wrong, right? That it's not that bad, I'm just gonna buy it. It looks great on all these ads. And there's just some things you shouldn't buy on a budget. Now, if you are in a budget and you're buying one of these racks, like I said, I think that this Rip Fit is great. If all you're ever gonna have is 900 bucks, it's a great rack for that price. I don't think you can get anything better for even like 1500 bucks and less. It's, it's really, it surprised me. And you can look at some other reviewers have had similar, I know Coach Carp on his Instagram page has been looking at it and has, has said the same thing. It's surprising how stable it is. It's surprising how good it is for the money. Now, like I said before, there are some trade-offs. You do trade some aesthetic things and some other stuff. So go watch that review if you're in the market for that. But there's some things just overall that I would say either don't get or wait to get until you have the money. So that's that's one thing is just overall is sometimes it's just not, you know, like the kit cars, right? You want a Ferrari, yeah, you probably shouldn't buy a budget Ferrari. It's just, it's not gonna do the trick. The second overall tip I have for you is to wait and save up if you can. And that, that really is a good piece of advice. If you can just be patient. I know a lot of us are like, I'm ready to get in shape right now, right? Like, especially on the beginning of the year, it's, you know, January 1st, you've made a New Year's resolution or whatever it happens to be. Or you know, like me recently, you've looked in the mirror with your shirt off and went, oh, we need to fix that. <laughs> I'm a pretty fluffy right now. And it's just something where you wanna do it right now, but I'm telling you, if you can just put some money aside every month and wait, you know, when we're talking about these all-in-one racks, if you can wait and save up $2,000, you can get the Force USA G3. I just posted a quick overview of it on my Instagram page. I'm hopefully gonna be able to get into the store where it's at and do a, a more detailed walkthrough for you guys. For two grand, it's, you know, it's a few hundred dollars more, it's twice the price of the RipFit, it's three times as good. It's better in every respect. It's gonna last you a long time. It's much better made, it functions better. Literally everything about it is better by quite a bit. So if you can wait and save up for something, instead of forcing yourself and going, well, I'm just gonna buy it now because this is what I can afford now, wait and save up for something better. Same thing with things like barbells. Look, if you know that all you're ever gonna to wanna to spend on a barbell is a couple hundred bucks, then buy that Living Fit barbell I was talking about, you'll love it. It's still in my garage. It's one of the favorite barbells for the folks that I train in here. It's a great barbell. But if you know that you're gonna be doing the home gym thing for a while, maybe save up for a while and buy one of the Rep Fitness barbells or buy one of the American barbell barbells, right? Like my American barbell bars are <laughs> some, of the, some of the best bars in my gym. I really, really like it. So. It's important that if you know you're gonna have this stuff for a long time, to wait and save up if you can. I promise that for the month or three you're gonna wait, you're gonna get a much better product in the long run. And six months from now, you're gonna look back and go, I'm glad I waited. The third overall tip that I give people is, you wanna start with, when you buy equipment, you wanna start with what is your desired outcome? And this is a really important concept in my life overall when I look at doing things, buying things, talking to people, is what's your desired outcome and is what you're doing now moving you closer to or further away from that desired outcome? And when you look at some of these multifunction things, some of the questions I ask people is, why do you need a Smith machine and a cable machine and a leg press seat and all this stuff in the first place? Right? What are you trying to do? What's your desired outcome? And more often than not, their desired outcome is, I wanna get stronger, I wanna lose weight, I wanna get back in shape, I wanna improve my mobility. There's a ton of things, right, that you build a home gym for. You don't need a cable machine or a Smith machine or a leg press to do that. 
And what I would rather see somebody do is instead of spending a ton of money or, or spending their whole budget on the cheapest possible all-in-one combination thing is to go to Rep Fitness, buy a PR1100 two by two squat rack, buy yourself their budget Delta basic bar, get yourself some used plates from someplace or buy those living fit bumper plates, build your entire gym with lower price stuff, but your money when we're talking about trading dollars for value, Every dollar you spend on that rack is going to that rack's strength and stability. And I know a lot of people who started their home gym on that rack and that rack lasted them for years. I would rather see you buy a plain four post rack and learn to lift with a barbell and dumbbells than to buy something that's got a Smith machine and cables because you think that that's gonna be easier to use. So keep that in mind that sometimes it's better to look at what your desired outcome is and go, hey, is what I'm buying, yes, okay, that'll get me in my desired outcome, but can I hit that desired outcome in another way that's A, gonna probably cost less, and B, definitely get you better stuff in the long run. So there's three overarching tips that will help you shop on a budget and hopefully end up with better stuff. And from my experience helping people buy home gyms, 90% of the people I give those tips to ignore them and do what they wanna do anyway. So take those tips for what they're worth. Uh, I always give them because I think they're valuable and the people who do follow them tend to get a lot out of them. But I understand that not everybody's gonna follow them. So let me give you, for everybody who's gonna ignore those tips, let me give you six more quick things to do so that you get at least as much as you can for the money that you're spending now. And the first one is to be leery of products that are marketed excessively. Now look, everybody's got to advertise, right? Rep advertises, Rogue advertises all the time. You know, everybody advertises. You have to do that as a business. But be real leery and ask a lot of questions if all of a sudden you see a gigantic marketing push where it's like, man, I'm seeing this brand everywhere now. Even Rep, who does a ton of marketing and makes fantastic products, doesn't do near the marketing of some of these Amazon only brands or some of these you know, import only brands that really you're gonna be sorry that you bought. Now, just because they do a lot of marketing doesn't mean that they're gonna be bad, but I would tell you that that's red flag number one. Red flag number two is when that marketing is being done by people who don't do fitness for a living or don't do home gyms for a living. So when you look at a lot of the marketing of some of the products I've talked about today, You'll see them on my channel, you'll see them on other home gym YouTubers channels, but you'll also see them on Girl Dad YouTube channels, you'll see them on productivity. You know, I saw a rack advertised by somebody who runs a productivity YouTube channel, and they're going, oh, it helps me be more productive because I can work out at home. This person has never worked out at home a day in her life. She's never owned a rack, she's never owned a barbell, she's got no business giving advice on home gym equipment. So when you see people marketing things where they're way out of their lane, that's another red flag. And when you combine those two, tons of marketing by people who really, eh, you know, like I see one, I keep giving examples, but there's just so many that, that kind of irk me. You know, there's one where this guy's like, I'm the fittest dad on the block. So he gets his leg press and he wheels it out into the street. Dude, what? Nobody's putting their leg press in the street. What does that have to do with this being good or not, right? It's, it's not. That's the kind of stuff to be really leery of. Sorry if I sound negative there, but as you can tell, uh, I really get disheartened when people call me and they buy something that they've wasted their money on. So the third thing, look for honest reviewers that point out both good and bad. Let's say that there is a, you know, the neighborhood's fittest dad, maybe he doesn't always do home gym reviews, but he comes on and he says, hey, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, you know, it's a great price, but this part could be better. Like, look for those reviews, even if they're out of their lane and even if it's a product that's marketed all the time. This is why I watch Gluck's Gym all the time. Gluck is, is the biggest home gym reviewer right now who is actually doing this. Everybody else at that level and Brandon, I'm sorry, Basement Brandon does this as well. So those two guys, Brandon and Gluck, they're very good at, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, I don't care what the company thinks, this product is bad, this product is good. When you see reviewers like that, you can generally trust them. When you see the opposite of that and you see, this is good and this is good and this is good and this is good and, and there you go, it's a good product, it's probably not an all the way good product. And that's why a lot of people wrote me surprised emails when I reviewed the two racks that I just reviewed. It's all they had seen so far is, this is good, this is good, this is good. Uh, I've got my shirt off and I look like I'm building strength on it. And then all of a sudden I come along and I'm like, well, this is good, this is good, but these other eight things aren't that good. Just be aware of that 
it's not that they're bad, just be aware of that if you're gonna buy this product. So be aware that when you're watching reviews and you're doing your research, and hopefully you're doing your research, that you look for people who are being honest. And if you don't think I'm being honest, then head up and, and hit up Gluck and hit up Basement Brandon, and those guys will do you right. I'm trying to do the same thing, and if you ever think I'm not doing that, make sure you call me out. Call me out publicly, put it in the comments, and tell me, hey Tim, I don't think you're being genuine, and I will definitely address that and make sure that I fix that problem going forward, because my goal is always to give you guys super honest information. Tip number four, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. And what I mean by that is if every other product in a category is X amount of money and along comes somebody who says it's the same and it's this amount of money, run for the hills. If it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. You may not notice until it's too late. You may not notice until three years after you own it, but you're gonna notice at some time why it's such a lower price, right? A Ferrari for the price of a Volkswagen is too good to be true. And that's why I started off with those examples. There's just you know a set of Spalding golf clubs that costs a tenth of what a good set of golf clubs does. It's too good to be true. It's just it's not worth the money. So be careful of those. Your intuition tells you when it's too good to be true. Pay attention to it. You guys know what you're doing. You've got a nice inner voice that tells you the truth. Just listen to it and pay attention to it, even though it might mean not buying something that you had your heart set on. Number five, this is where I pitch my buddy Ashton at Freedom Fitness. Buy pre-owned. There are so many people out there who start to build a home gym and then end up with a bunch of clothes racks and they sell their stuff and it ends up with people like Ashton. You're gonna get great gear at a really affordable price. Check out Freedom Fitness, I'll put a link below. If you're trying to shop for things and get a lot for your money and you're like, hey, but I want a Smith machine and a cable machine and I don't wanna spend X, check out Ashton over at Freedom Fitness. Buying pre-owned is a great way to go, and I promise you, he's one of the good guys. He will absolutely steer you the right way. He will not sell you a piece of junk. He will tell you exactly what you're buying and why you're buying it, why it's good. You may buy something that you've never heard of before, but I promise you, he won't steer you wrong, and buying pre-owned is a great way to save some money. And the last tip is just to reiterate what the whole first half of the video was, is make the right trade-offs. If you're gonna trade lower price for something, Make sure you're trading lower price for not as pretty of a finish. Maybe you're trading lower price for not as good as shipping. Maybe you're trading, you get the idea. Don't trade lower price for performance and safety. It's a really important point. Don't trade those two things. So what do you guys think? What kind of tips can you give everybody? As I always say, the collective wisdom of all of you guys far outpaces anything that I've got. So share your stories down below. I'll do the pinned comment as usual and we'll put all of the tips that I think are valuable in that pinned comment so as people watch this episode, they can get even more tips. How have you saved money? How have you wasted money? What have you thought you were getting a good deal on and you weren't? And as usual, if you have watched all the way to right now and you haven't hit that like button, why not? Go ahead and hit that like button. And if you watched all the way now and you didn't like this episode, why did you watch this long something that you didn't like? I'd really like to know. Comment down below why you would watch something this long that you don't like. And uh, that's it for today. So until the next episode or until the next video, I appreciate you guys hanging out. And I'm Tim with Jim Crafter.